this week, the saga of my broken Z10 continues. And you know what else? Look what we got in the mail today. I have never been so excited at receiving a motherboard through the mail. Sure sigh that my nerdy obsession with the electric unicycle have progressed even further. Just wonderful. Meanwhile, to get away from all of our problems in regards to the Z10, I decided to take a little road trip and I also used the opportunity to talk about my hatred of driving and fascination with uh, personal transportation of all kind. This week, we're in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Roll the intro. As always, if you enjoy it, please subscribe and like the video. First of all, with the insurance as well as the outrageous cost of uh, parking a car here in downtown New York City, you practically have to be a multi-millionaire in order to have a car. And on those occasions, when I do need a car, like our little trip uh, out to Cape Cod, let's just say that it requires a good bit of coordination. Starting with a trip out to my parents in Queens. Now since I'm cheap, I rent out of places near the LaGuardia Airport as opposed to the more convenient but significantly more expensive places in the city. Good thing I still have my little i5 since uh, thanks to the Taxi and Limousine Commission there are no easy public transport to either one of the airport here in New York even though it's a bit slow. Then it is back to my parents house to pick up my boat. That's right, there's two boats inside of these pack. This is a 14 foot kayak, and that is a 12 foot long two person rowing dinghy. I know this is a slight departure from my usual content. However, as Doc would tell you. Roads, where we're going, we don't need roads. So we've been driving for about three hours and we finally got out of all the crazy traffic around New York City. I think we're hitting another patch around New Haven, but it's probably not going to last as long. And essentially for the last three hours, I was basically driving at about five miles per hour the whole time. So you can see why I have very little love for the act of driving. See, I never realized this until I've driven in a few other country. But the uh, rest stop we have here in the state is pretty darn terrible. And for the most part, they all look very similar. San Chen restaurant and nothing to clue you in as to exactly where you are. All right. It's, uh, we've been driving for about seven hours now and uh, we're finally at the bridge and about to get into uh, Cape Cod. The problem with getting to Cape Cod is that there is just a single bridge with me. There's another bridge but you have to take a big loop so this is the shortest way. There's always a traffic jam. It's basically 11 p.m right now and uh, I'm just sitting in traffic trying to get on the bridge. I'm convinced that this is how they try to keep riffraff like me off of Cape Cod. I'm always amazed at how empty Cape Cod feels considering that it's only about 50 miles away from downtown Boston. And I'm sure that's why people love coming here to get away from the busy urban life. I was born in a city, and unlike some who aren't, I take comfort in the cacophony of crowds and noise of a city. And nature had always come packaged in the form of parks, documentary, and short local hikes. Bite-sized, easily digestible pieces, but it is out here where I really understood and felt what that word truly meant.
I first came out to KAKA more than 10 years ago to visit my friends. For some, it may seem to be the perfect opportunity to quietly enjoy a peaceful lifestyle. But for me, what I saw was the opportunity to explore a vast, fascinating environment. And that's when I discovered boating, but not the motorized kind. For one thing, I never developed an affinity with the internal combustion engine. To me, the weight, noise, and speed of the vehicle took away rather than add to the experience of a place. I love being able to slowly explore a saltwater estuary and coastal marshes on the kayak and that led to me getting a folding kayak and eventually the rowing canoe so I could bring Kelly along on the trip. It is certainly on the extreme end of my various obsessions that I tell you about my saltwater reef tank but for those people who might be interested, here's my two second review. It's not expedition grade and shouldn't be dragged over rocks, but the My Canoe folding canoe is decently rigid, stable, with great capacity, and the rowing kit actually works surprisingly well. I think it's this. And yes, it's a full size canoe that folds up and fits in your closet. Most importantly, it works. We went clamming. Did you know that was a thing? Like as in digging clam right out of the sand and actually eating them later. An hour of mucking about netted a large overflowing bucket of ginormous clams. Enough for dinner and takeaway. But enough with the boats and the clams. You're here for the electric unicycle and well, although my Z10 is still on extended summer break, I did bring my i5 and rode it whenever I had the opportunity. So there's no dancing around it. I really, really miss my Z10, especially out here where the distance is significantly greater. The i5 really felt sorely lacking when it comes to uh, speed and range out here. And it's unfortunate because Cape Cod would be like an awesome place to explore via electric unicycle given its much greater range as compared to, let's say, a bicycle for that matter. It's a beautiful place. Driving demands just enough of your attention so that you can do nothing else. It also kept you enclosed and segregated in the car and confined to the road. Behind the windshield, I often thought of it as the most boring show in the world that I am forced to watch rerun of, and I question the sanity of those who enjoy this act. But it also offers you the opportunity to experience the world at a scale not possible otherwise. That which slowly dawned on me as I drove across the spectacular landscape on my cross-country trip last year. The modern car is rooted in an age of infinite expansion and consumption. But in places where infinite amount of space is no longer available, it is a lot less effective as a solution. And although it is nice to have your own comfortable bubble, it also isolates and drives us apart. That's why you should get an electric unicycle. There. Anyhow, that was quite the detour. The return trip was no more pleasant and took another 8 hours, but I have the consolation of having the replacement Z10 control board waiting for me. So as promised, here is the board that Jason FedExed me next day as a replacement. Theoretically, if the fall is indeed what we thought it was, all it takes is swapping this guy in, screwing everything back together, and that would bring my uh, Z10 back from the dead. I'm gonna keep my finger crossed and hope for the best. All right, the moment of truth. Everything is back to where they need to be. It's just a matter of turning the wheel back on and see whether or not the new uh, motor control bore uh, bring the wheel back. I really hope it does. If it doesn't, that means I'll likely have to send the whole wheel back to Jason. Let's see. I really hope this works. No, that's not good. not a good sign. 
Looks like we have failed. It's still not working. Uh, same issue as before. Doesn't seem to have improved at all. Well, that was an anticlimactic end. And once again, I wasted 10 minutes of your life with my babble. I hope it was enjoyable. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And as always, please subscribe to my channel and like the video. Until the next video, thank you.